In this video today, I wanted to talk to you about how to visually estimate the cardiac function or the ejection fraction. We're going to focus on the left ventricle and right ventricle. I hope that you find this helpful and I'll work you through how I do this. You know, looking at it visually is quite good for picking it up. Uh, you have a pretty good sensitivity as far as detecting uh, normal cardiac function versus severely reduced function. So hopefully this video will help you and we'll work through those together. So one of the key elements that you want to look for when you're identifying this is you want to be able to identify the inner walls of the myocardium. So whether it's the right ventricle or left ventricle, you want to be able to identify this my myocardium and you're going to work on visualizing what happens with that. So when we're in a peristernal long axis, mostly I focus on the left ventricle. I don't make a lot of determination with the right ventricle, but you can do a little bit. But in this uh, example, I'm going to focus on the left. So we identify the uh, myocardial wall that we see here, and we're going to pay attention to how much that uh, comes close together or uh, comes together when evaluating this. In addition to doing that, another trick you can do is look at the anterior mitral valve leaflet and how well it approximates the septal wall of the left ventricle. If, that, if the anterior mitral valve leaflet is hitting up against the mitral wall in the initial uh, filling of the left ventricle, then the odds are that your uh, ejection fraction is normal or in the normal range. Now obviously this can be difficult to interpret in uh, patients with arrhythmia or tachycardia and was limited by people with mitral stenosis and or aortic valve regurgitation. So, Take it with a grain of salt, but that's what you can do. And so when we look at this example, we have both normal cardiac function and a severely reduced. We can see that those myocardial walls of the left ventricle are really coming together. They're almost kissing in this example. Um, and then we compare that to on the right in the severely reduced EF. We can see that those myocardial walls are really not moving very uh, well towards each other. And then when we look at the mitral valve in both of them, the mitral valve on the right uh, image in the severely reduced is just barely opening. Whereas if you pay attention, you can see that mitral valve leaflet uh, coming really close to the uh, septum right here. And you can see it just flipping up and hitting right there initially. It does come down, it goes up, hits the walls, come down a little bit, and then you get your active phase of the uh, left atria. And that will do some, uh, known as your atrial kick, and that will fill the left ventricle some. But those are two ways to uh, help you interpret this view for the for function. Now keep in mind, we try not to just think of one view for determining function because we may be limited on what we're seeing and what walls we're seeing. So we're going to continue to do the entire exam. And what we see here next is we're going to go to a peristernal short. And what I like to think of is a red dot or a small dot in the middle of the ventricle, of the left ventricle. We're not going to worry about the right ventricle again. And we're going to worry about how well all the myocardial walls uh, come down. Now remember, they do not need to touch. That would be if it had an ejection fraction of 100%. And remember, above 50, some will say 55% is normal. And so we're going to look at this and just see if that function looks normal. So we're going to think about those walls coming in towards that red dot. Now on the left again, we're going to see our normal function. This is very good collapse. Uh, it's a little bit of a limited view, but these are the same patient throughout this. And so although this is not as an ideal of you, we can see here that um, the ejection fraction looks good or the function looks good. Compared to on the right, we can see that the uh, right or left ventricle is not uh, collapsing very well, that the myocardial is not um, coming into the center. Now that view is a little off plane, but still gives us an idea of what's happening there. Now, additionally, I want to point out, we do see this lead here. This is a pacemaker lead within the right ventricle, which is out in here. So just keep in mind right now, we're mostly focusing, focusing on the left ventricle and this myocardial wall through here. And again, we see that that's not collapsing very well in towards the center of that. Now in an apical four chamber view, um, we're gonna look at two directions. We're gonna look at the, um, from the apex down towards the mitral valve collapsing, and then also the lateral collapse from the septal wall to the outer wall. And even though the heart has three muscle layers, or the left ventricle has three muscle layers that collapse both in a longitudinal and an axial plane and then kind of in a diagonal plane, we will appreciate just these two movements when we look at the ultrasound. Now, ad additionally, we're going to see the same thing when we look at the left ventricle, and this is probably the best view, or I guess is the 
the view I use always for determining the right ventricular function. Um, unfortunately, that can be limited if you're not seeing the right ventricle very well. But again, what we're going to do, we're going to look at both chambers in here, and we can see that we have shortening from the apex down towards the mitral valve. So through here, it's shortening. But then we also have shortening from here to here, and so we got to really keep our eye on those two. Additionally, on the right ventricle, we're going to shorten from here to here and from here to here. Now, I have seen, especially on the right ventricle, that you may not, you may miss this shortening and still have this preserved or vice versa. Um, so keep in mind that you, we are typically evaluating for both. If you're seeing one of those, uh, the ejection fraction may be reduced. When we look at this uh, severely reduced EF, again, we're looking along this wall. We can see a little bit of the apex here. We don't have hardly any shortening this way. We only have a little bit here. Don't get this as mistaken as the myocardial wall. That's a uh, thick uh, papillary muscle. And again, we can see the pacemaker lead. And again, we don't see shortening here and we don't see shortening here. So this patient has both uh, left and right uh, systolic dysfunction. We can also see how big these atria have become because of that. Now, when we go to a sub-xiphoid view, uh, this can really depend on the patient. Sometimes you can't interpret the EF real well, especially if you're doing this during like a, a trauma evaluation. You may not be using the phased array probe or cardiac probe, and you may be only using the curvilinear probe. So you may not be able to interpret this as well. But again, in this view, I do interpret the uh, EF or the cardiac function of the left ventricle, and I will do it in the right. And again, we're just going to pay attention to how much that ventricular walls are collapsing towards each other. Not so much shortening in this one. And then on the right ventricle, we're going to worry about this outer uh, wall, how much it approximates the septal wall. Now, I do want you to remember that the septal wall is going to come towards the outer wall of the, uh, the ventricle here. So the septal wall is going to come this way. It will not come back towards the outer wall or free wall of the right ventricle. So don't, uh, don't worry about that or don't assume that the EF of the right ventricle is reduced if that's not happening. So again, we're going to see both here. We can see that the function is nice and normal of the left ventricle. The right ventricle wall on the normal functioning image is a little bit difficult to see, uh, but this again is a normal functioning right and left ventricle, whereas on the right we can see that there is not much collapse of the walls towards each other. Um, and so this is again a severely reduced EF. Again, we can appreciate how large the atria are. Additionally, we can go to the sub xiphoid short access. Um, if you have not done that one, I'll put a link up here in the corner toward, to a video on how to perform that view. Again, I like to think of a dot in the middle of the ventricle and how much it collapses towards that dot, just like we did in a peristernal short access. This is often a great view. Um, in our COPD patients uh, or when they have lung disease. And often uh, it's in patients that we can't get the uh, peristernal short in that we can get this really well. So always try for this view. And again, we're gonna see that that ejection fraction or the functionality of the left ventricle is great in the sub xiphoid view. And then we look at that severely reduced and we can see that it's barely moving, that those walls are hardly moving towards each other. So hopefully that's a good comparison for you as far as the function, evaluating the function of the left ventricle and um, the right ventricle. I just wanted to go over the IVC real quick. Um, so not always does the uh, CVP or central venous pressure reflect what the heart is doing. So in this case, our severely reduced EF, we're going to see that the IVC actually collapses a lot. And in the normal functioning, it does not. That does not have correlate with their volume overloaded. That just means that the central venous pressure is elevated and there's a lot of pitfalls with that. But what we're going to pay attention to is how much collapse there is during inspiration of the uh, IVC walls towards each other. Now this is not a compressibility. You're not checking for compression. What you're doing is checking for their respiration pattern and to see how much collapse there is. And again, we'll see actually in our normal functioning heart that we don't see very much collapse. So this is going to be a higher central venous pressure, whereas the patient with the severely reduced EF um, has approximately 50% collapse. You can do some measurements of this. Again, though, you can just eyeball it. So I hope you found that video helpful as far as uh, visually interpreting the ejection fraction and having those comparison views.
If you have any questions about this video, please comment below. I'll try to respond to those. Also, if you have any questions about any other point of care ultrasound related uh, topics, please don't email me at pokisgeek at gmail.com. And you can also follow me on Twitter at pokisgeek. Uh, here I post a few tweets, but most of the time come across other good content that I share.